So last week, uh, the fear of the Lord. Uh, tonight, the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Anong ang pioneering misyonaro at manlalakbay na si David Livingstone ay unang lumayag patungo sa uh, kagubatan ng Afrika upang simulan ang habang buhay na paglilingkod. Ang grupo ng kanyang mga kaibigan ay sinamahan siya hanggang sa kanyang pagtawid upang magpaalam. Ngunit ang ilang sa kanila na nagaalala sa kanyang kaligtasan ay binalaan siya sa, pang, sa mga panganib ng kanyang haharapin at uh, hinikayat siyang manatili sa, sa England. Kaya't binuklat ni Livingstone ang, kang, ang kanyang Biblia at pinasang malakas ang pangako ni Kristo sa kanyang mga disiplo na magpapatuloy sa pamamagitan ng banal na Espiritu. Narito, ako'y sumasa inyong palagi hanggang sa katapusan ng sanlibutan. At sa loob ng maraming taon, ipinagpatuloy niya na ihayag ang Ebanghelyo hanggang sa kanyang pag-uwi, pabalik sa kanyang tahanan, na ngayon isa ng matandang lalaki na paralisado ang kaliwang kamay dahil sa atake ng leon. At sa kanyang pananalita, uh, Sa isang iglesia, kanyang sinabi, Hayaan ninyong sabihin ko sa inyo, ang nagpanatili sa akin sa panahon ng pakihirap at kalungkutan. Ito ang pangako ng Diyos. Narito, ako'y sumasa inyong palagi hanggang sa katapusan ng sanlibutan. Saan man siya magpunta, mula sa unang ar araw hanggang sa dulo ng kanyang buhay, Siya ay inaaliw ng di nagbabagong pangako ng presensya ng Diyos na ating nabasa sa Acts 9.31. Ang presensya ng Diyos, ang presensya ng Ama, ang pakikipag-isa ng anak ni Kristo, ang indwelling ng Espiritu, ito ang kanyang nananatiling kaaliwan sa panahon ng kaguluhan. Whatever he faced in life, he was constantly reminded of that life verse. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. At ngayong hapon, sa ating pagtuon sa health report ni Dr. Luke, tungkol sa mga iglesia sa Judea, Galilea at Samaria, ang aking pag na ang parehong kaaliwan na umila, uh, umaliw sa mga tanyag na misyonaro ng nakaraan, At ang, bagong ng, at ang bagong mga iglesia sa New Testament ay makilala at maramdaman ng bawat mananampalataya dito sa Grace Plant Santa Maria. It is my hope and prayer that each of us might know something of the presence of God which might motivate us to live in this fallen world. You see, habang ikaw ay Sumasang-ayon theologically na ang ilang mga kalaob ng banan na espirito ay tumigil na. Ang katotahanan ay ang Diyos banal na espirito ay buhay na buhay at kumikilo sa ating mundo ngayon. He's not dead but He is well on the way to victory. Jesus is coming back and the Holy Spirit is at work. He's still in the business of, of saving His people. And so if you've ever signed up for something called cessationism, uh, some of us here might say, I'm a, I'm a cessationist, meaning I believe that the, some of the ways that the Spirit worked in the Bible times are different to the way that He works today. Cessationism does not mean that the Spirit has gone to sleep. No, He's still working, convicting, converting, and comforting His people. Now, many of you could say a lot about those first two roles, the way that the Holy Spirit convicts people of sin and converts people from their old life. Oh, we know uh, much of these things, don't we? Because the Bible tells us. But one of the things that we often forget about the Holy Spirit is His work to comfort His people. And that's what I want to preach to you on, the subject of the comfort of the Holy Spirit as seen through our text here in Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Ang nakaraang linggo ay patungkol lahat sa takot 
Ngunit ngayong hapon, tayo'y pupunta sa kabilang dulo. May kung anumang tungkol sa Diyos na dapat magpa, magpa, sorry, magpaalala ng takot at kaaliwan sa ating mga puso. When we see God as He's described in the Bible, we should both feel fearful of Him and also comforted by Him. These two truths are, are so evident in the church there in ancient Israel. And so this is not something that is dependent upon your personality type. This is not either or. Are you more a person who fears or more a person who is comforted? But this is both ands. We are both fearful of God and we are comforted by the Holy Spirit. These two truths, they don't cancel each other out. But they complement one another in a wonderful balance. They're unidentical twins. Reverent fear of our great and glorious God and wonderful comfort from the gospel is what defined this early church. And last week we listed some of the attributes of our God. We see him as a, a God who the angels call holy, holy, holy. A God who is mighty yet merciful, great yet gracious. All of these wonderful truths to describe Him should cause us to fall upon our knees and say, God, I am an unclean man or unclean woman. I'm a sinner in need of salvation. But while we also fear God, we must also receive comfort. As we see the Gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, there we see Jesus walking through the earth providing for His people, rescuing sinners, healing the sick. And so He can do today. So we must take great comfort as we also fear the Lord. Now Thomas Watson was an old Puritan preacher many hundreds of years ago said this. He said, counterintuitively, the fear of God promotes spiritual joy. It is the morning star that ushers in the sunlight of comfort. And so when I read Acts chapter 9 verse 31, and I see these qualities on full display in the early church, I think to myself today, as a church planter here, but also as a, as a Christian believer in general, I think, wow, this is the kind of church that I want to be a part of. This is the kind of church that I want Grace Plant Santa Maria to become. When we finally covenant together as members and we say, let us walk together in the fear of the Lord. Let us walk in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Oh, may these two realities be descriptive of our life together. Subalit pansinin ninyo, ang lahat ng ito ay nagaganap habang ang iglesia ay nagtatamasa ng di pangkaraniwang panahon ng kapayapaan. After the storms, there is this calm. You see, persecution has dominated the chapters from chapter 1 until this moment. Persecution has come to the churches. Stephen has been stoned and the church has had to disperse and run and hide because there are people out there to attack them, not least Saul of Tarsus, who becomes Paul the Apostle. But, Paul has wonderfully seen the light on the road to Damascus and his life has been turned upside down. He's been converted to Christ and the great enemy of the church becomes the great ambassador of the church. And as he is converted and sent away to Tarsus and the historical commentaries which tell us that it was about this time that Pontius Pilate was replaced by a, a new ruler called Vitellius whose role was to promote order and stability in the regions of these local churches. Habang may panganib pa rin sa pagiging disiplo, ang pag-uusig na, na unang pumutok pagkatapos ng pagbato kay Stephen ay pansamantalang tumigil. At ang iglesia, kahit na maaring namnamin ang oras ng pahinga at ginhawa, ay kabahagi ng isang building project. Parehas in terms of size and maturity. There is spiritual growth in the church. There are people who are coming along to the worship services, hungry for the gospel. People are packing into the prayer meetings, praying with fervency. People are serving on the streets, witnessing with courage. 
This is a great place to be. But notice also, it's not just spiritual growth, but numerical growth. Notice edification and multiplication. They're growing. They're building. They're saying to themselves, we can't start meeting in the garden of our church plant that we've got to find somewhere in town to rent. So it's mass comfortable, but also, but also mass malaki. And that's the kind of good problems that churches often have to face. When the Lord is at work, blessing the ministry, we are forced to take those practical steps to accommodate those numbers. And I want us to notice that, that Dr. Luke has not shied away from the statistics. I don't know if this is because he's a doctor, but he's, he's talking all the time about numbers. Notice after Pentecost, 3,000 were added to the church that day. And all the way through Acts, the book of Acts, we see this continual repetition of the numbers of converts that were being made. Now there can, can't there, be an obviously unhealthy obsession with numbers. There can be this kind of feeling that we, we, we want to get that good picture to post so that we get more support from abroad. But actually the reality is we're not about numbers primarily but don't we want more people don't we want to say look okay you feel like uh, we're 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 cramped in terms of size this afternoon well look at this part of the garden there's another side to fill we've got a lot of work to do before we say to ourselves that there's no way that we can possibly fit and worship god in this place we want god to to fill our church don't we we want to see more and more coming to salvation in Jesus Christ. But there can be an unhealthy concern for numbers. Maraming mga leader ang gumagamit ang growth strategies para sa iglesia. Ngunit hindi nila tunay na itinatatag ang mga iglesia bakus mga imperyo. Wala silang mga pastor ngunit may mga CEO. At ang malaki nilang bilang ay hindi tanda na sila'y Lumalago, subalit, namamaga. They're growing, but it's actually not a good growth. It's a swelling growth. And you know the situation, don't you? Uh, sometimes uh, our son Judah, he seems to really struggle with insect bites. And sometimes he gets bitten and his whole arm will swell up. In fact, last week he had one hand that was twice the size of his other hand. And we had to take him because it's swollen. Is that a good thing? No, we don't want that kind of growth in our children. We want them to grow at a steady pace. And so it is with many churches today. They're not growing, but they're swelling. There's some infection that has come into the church, and it's evident in the numbers that are coming along. They're not teaching the congregations. They're entertaining the congregation. They're not seeking to grow them up spiritually, but they're to grow them simply numerically. And yet, as I say, that's not the kind of numbers that Luke is speaking of. Now, as the old hymn says, we long to see thy churches full. And that is the kind of obsession that Luke has for more and more people to gather to hear the gospel. Nice nothing ang bawat Sunday services ay mapuno ng husto ng mga mananamba. We want to see hungry people, not just for the, the, the food that has been prepared for us later, but for the food that is right here, right now, in the Word of God, that spiritual bread. Kung ang ating motibo ay ang makitang nilulwalhati ang Diyos, maligtas ang mga makasalanan, at ang mga iglesia ay maitatag upang higit na gumawa para sa kaharian ng Diyos, hindi maling hangarin ang paglagong numerical katulad ng paglagong spiritual sa ating mga Iglesia. And we recognize all along, don't we, that unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain. In fact, that was the, the key verse for our, our, our launch day service about five or six months ago in April. We said that constantly, it is the Lord's work. This is not Reuben's ministry. This is not your ministry, but this is Christ's ministry. This is his church plant, and he will grow it as he pleases, 
and we must submit to him in obedience. So what do we do then? If, if God is the church planter, if God is the master builder, do we just let go and let God do his work in the world? Do we just say, let's just sit back, relax, and cheer him on from the sidelines? Some churches do that. They call it hyper-Calvinism. They say, okay, we, we believe the, that, that God is sovereign in salvation, so we just sit back and allow God to gather in the lost. That is not the responsibility of the church of Christ. Nothing wrong with being a Calvinist so long as you understand the responsibility of our, our church plant. That we are to be going into all the world to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the Great Commission. Divine, divine sovereignty and human responsibility. That's what we see here in verse 31. This beautiful blend, this great combination of God working and the church walking. But secondly, they're not just walking in the fear of the Lord, but secondly, in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And it is with this in mind that I'd like us to look at three explanations. Now, una, a comfort that is countercultural. Ikaloa, a comfort that is close. And ikatlo, a comfort that is constant. Makikita natin sa verse 31. We see the work of the Holy Spirit there. But first of all, he provides us with comfort that is countercultural. Countercultural, kaaliwang hindi na ayon sa kultura. Nakara ang linggo, ating tinukoy ang makabagong mundo na may kultura ng kakot. We notice that whenever you look around the world, everybody seems very afraid today. We fear what may be lurking around the corner. We're scared of the dark. We get fearful of so many things. But do you know also, sa kabilang banda, may kultura din ng kaginhawaan. Dahil sa ayaw nating matakot ang mga tao, ang pag-uspong ng therapy culture ay gumagapang sa bawat sulok ng ating lipunan. Kung masama ang pakiramdam mo, kailangan itong pumuti. If somebody feels down, you've got to lift them up. There's no good in feeling bad. That's the anthem of the modern age. At nandyan ang lahat ng klase ng solution na inaalok. Pag scroll sa social media, Netflix binging, sport and gaming, Online shopping sprees. Marami pa ang nasa listahan. Ang consumer, consumerismo at materialismo ay nakatuan sa pagpabagaan ng nararamdaman. In the post-Christian West, that's where I'm from, from the UK, the West is, is really full of this idea that we need to be comfortable. You might say, well, that's terrible. Uh, but actually, the reality is, even here in the East, we prioritize that same thing, don't we? Comfort is key. We don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable. Well, uh, I'm not trying to give you an illustration uh, this afternoon, but how many of you feel uncomfortable right now? I feel pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> and so we're not, I, I'm giving you a real illustration of the countercultural comfort that comes through the Bible. It's obviously not. Luxurious AC, right? Walang aircon dito sa, sa labas. Electric fans na lang para sa mga tao sa, sa harap lang. <laughs> if you're at the back, I told you, there's no blessing at the back. But the reality is this. Comfort is not key according to the gospel. Ang mundo ay naniniwala na ang kawala, kawalan ng presensya ng Diyos ay dapat mapunan ng presensya ng anumang bagay at marami sa mga ito ang naglalaban-laban upang punu punuin itong malalim na walang laman. We value our leisure, we value our pleasure. Ang mundong ito na historically ay dating lugar ng, ng digmaan para sa ating mga ninuno ay isa ng palaruan sa makabagong lalaki at babae. And that's the truth, is it not? What an easy generation we're giving to our children compared to the ones that some of you had when you were growing up. It's a difficult world to live 
but we're constantly trying to cover it up with comfort at all costs. Comfort culture. Ang ebidensya nito ay kalat sa lahat. At maring inisip ninyo na ang iglesia ay naiba. Ngunit malungkot mang sabihin kahit ang mga tinatawag na iglesia ay namu na namuhunan sa kaaliwan. Yan ang katwiran ng health and prosperity, health and wealth movement. Ito ang pakikayat ng tinatawag na prosperity gospel. You just name it and claim it. You just blab it and grab it. You just say it and you get it. You know, there's a, there's a popular catchphrase today. I think it was popularized by a certain a pop star who said, I see it, I like it, I want it, I got it. You know that song? But there are many churches that have sought to Christianize that statement. And they say, yeah, Jesus wants you to be happy. He wants you to be healthy and wealthy. He never wants you to be sick. He never wants you to have problems. You've got to have more faith by giving more money to the pastor so he can fly around in a private jet and live in a great mansion. And you're laughing, but you know is it's true, that don't you? You and know that that is how many have corrupted the gospel of Jesus Christ with prosperity teaching. And I think to myself, Nabasa ba nila ang Biblia? Di ba nila nakita ang parte, parte kung saan sinabi ni Jesus? Sino mang nagnanais sumunod sa akin ay kailangan itakwil ang kanyang sarili, pasanin ang kanyang cross at sumunod sa akin. In other words, ang buhay kristyano ay hindi madali. It's hard to walk in a world like this when all around us it feels so uncomfortable. Oh, how hard it is to depend upon the Bible's teaching. Ang daan patungo sa langit ay malungkot na landas. You have to break with the crowd. You must dare to stand alone. You must walk to the beat of a different drum. If you want to be a Christian, it is not cozy, but it is costly. If you want to live for Jesus, then do not expect an easy ride. But expect dangers and toils and snares. We get the example throughout the pages of Scripture. Some of the most godly of men were the poorest of men. And you know that, don't you? Even from your own experience, some of those wonderful, faithful believers are people with very little in terms of this world's possessions. And so I want to, I want to encourage you that prosperity is coming but not necessarily on this side of eternity. No, this side of eternity in this world, we will have riches in glory to look forward to, but maybe nothing to claim in this world. And so I want to say that the yearning that the world has for comfort is not a bad thing, but it's a misplaced thing. In other words, if you just want to be healthy and wealthy now, then you haven't understood that the gospel says it comes in the life to come where there is no more sickness, no more pain, but riches in glory. Tayo ay maging gaya ng iglesia sa verse 31. Lumakat sa kaaliwan ng Espiritu na may pagtuan sa walang hanggan kaaliwan ng langit. Kaya ko sinasabi na ito ang kaaliwang di naaayon sa kultura. Dahil ang kaaliwan na binibigay ng Diyos ay hindi sinasalungat ang realidad ng pagdurusa. Hindi ka nito binibigyan ng force field or immunity mula sa mga dangers in this world. No, when you commit your lives to Jesus Christ, expect difficulty. Sa mundong nahulog sa kasalanan, ang sakit ay di matatanggihan at maiiwasan. At ganun din ang kaaliwan na nagmumula sa banal na espiritu na dinadala ang salita upang hilumin ang ating mga puso. Ang mga pahayag gaya sa ikalawang Korinto 4.17 Our light and our momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal weight of glory. O sa John 16.33 In this world you will have trouble. Ang tingin kay Jesus. It's that hymn that we love to sing. 
In Tagalog, what is it? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. What do we sing again? Do you remember the words? I've forgotten now. As soon as I get the first word, I remember it. Tingnan, tingnan si Jesucristo. Tingnan si Jesucristo. Tingnan si Jesucristo. Mas tan kanyang kagandahan. And it goes on. <laughs> and I can't remember the rest. But you know the, the, the song, don't you? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Because there is something about Him that will make the feelings of earth very dim. There is something in the beauty of Christ that gives us the motivation to live for Him, even in the darkness of this world. Justified, sanctified, not yet glorified. That is the comfort that the church can offer to the world through the Holy Spirit. And that's how it comes to us. The Spirit is nothing like the friends of that man Job from the Old Testament. You know the story of Job? Job had many so-called friends, but where were they in the moments of difficulty? Well, they were just there to add insult to injury. They started accusing him of not trusting in the Lord. And, he, and Job said this, he said, look, I've heard many things. Miserable comforters are you all. And mga kaibigan, you know this, don't you? There are many so-called miserable comforters in your life. Miserable comforters abound in this world. There's sex, drugs, and rock and roll. There's career climbing. There's making money. But all of it, it only intensifies the pain, doesn't it? Alexander the Great conquered the known world of his day, but he was once found weeping in his tent, despairing at the fact that there are no more worlds to conquer. He'd reached the top of his game, but he realized that none of it was anything. It was total loss. The world is not enough. That is the word of Jesus Christ. And so, so where do we go? Where do we go? In a world like this, where well, here is the Holy Spirit. Dito sa Acts 9.31. Dito sa Grace Plant Santa Maria. Ilang linggo, ilang mga buwan din ang ginugol natin sa it's a teaching on the work of not only the Father, not only the Son, but also of the Holy Spirit. We've seen it through our doctrines of grace class. We're saying that ultimately those who believe in the doctrines of grace are those who prize the sovereignty of the Holy Spirit in salvation. His irresistible grace, His effectual calling. And that is the Holy Spirit who is at work in the church here. And yet he's a neglected member. You know many people, they call the Holy Spirit the forgotten person of the Trinity. Even though he's mentioned 56 times in the book of Acts alone. He's growing, he's guiding, he's empowering, he's edifying, he's convicting, he's calling, he's regenerating, he's renewing, he's teaching and testifying to the churches. And bakit natin sinasamba ang ama at ang anak Ngunit kadalas ay kinakaligtaan at mali ang pakakatindi sa persona at trabaho ng banan na Espiritu. Why do we forget Him? I wonder, I said it this morning when I was preaching in TNC, I wonder if it's uh, because in the, new, in the King James Version, He's often referred to as the Holy Ghost. And I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound very inviting, does it? To call someone a ghost is someone that you run away from in fear. It's all those cartoons with the, the white sheet and those googly eyes. And it's terrifying. And so if we call him the Holy Ghost, I think it sends the wrong message. And maybe that's a reason for the fact that many people forget to worship the Holy Spirit. But I want you to know today, and I want you never to forget here in Grace Plant, that there is no church without the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Without Him, we cannot function as a congregation. Godly leaders cannot be called. Believers cannot be added. Growth can never be 
enabled. Ano mang discussion sa iglesia ay labis na kulang kapag wala na malalim na pagtingin sa presensya at ministerio ng banal na espiritu. Walang pastor ang may kakayahang tumayo sa pulpit para ihayag ang salita ng Diyos maliban sa kapangyarihan, paglilinaw at kaaliwan ng espiritu. We are totally and utterly dependent upon Him for everything as we function as believers in Christ. And so kaya mga kaibigan, habang pinagmamastan mo ang mundo ngayon, habang nakikita mo ang mga bagay na dapat ikabahala, tandaan mo na ikaw ay hindi walang kaaliwan. God has not left us on our own. Because the Spirit, He provides us with a comfort that is countercultural. But secondly, He provides us with a comfort that is close. O kaaliwang malapit. Hindi ito isang klaseng kaaliwan na darating at aalis din. Nakadepende sa kung ano ang pakiramdam ng panal na espiritu. Subalit ito ay laging nariyan. All seasons of life. We can depend upon the presence of the Holy Spirit. At habang sinagaya ng gagawin nila sa oras ng pag-uusik, alam natin, madaling magisa at umasa sa sariling kakayahan kapag ang lahat ng bagay ay madali at walang hira. Ngunit, ang iglesyang ito ay hindi ginawa ang pagkakamaling, pag, sorry, pagkakamaling. You never move beyond your need for the Holy Spirit's work in your life. No such thing as an independent church because we are dependent upon the Holy Spirit for everything in life. There's not a moment in your life that you do not need the Holy Spirit. In peaceful times and in times of plenty, we are equally dependent upon the close comfort of the Holy Spirit. Ngunit tayo ay bumalik ang nang ilang taon mula sa ating teksto, si Jesus uh, Kristo ay nabuhay at namatay, bumangon at malapit ng umaakyat. At sa pambungat na talata sa, sa Acts, sinabi niya sa mga disiplo, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses to Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. It was actually a follow-up to what he had already said in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 25 to 27, when he said, These things I have spoken to you while being present with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all. It's great to have a Helper, isn't it? And sometimes you're struggling to, to get everything done, and somebody comes and they help you. To make it easier. Uh, in fact, one of the things that I'm really grateful for as we grow as a church plant is that I was not the one to put the chairs out earlier and to set up the tech and to put the live stream in order. Oh, I can just uh, focus on the ministry and the word and I'm grateful for our brothers and sisters in Christ specifically to help you and to comfort you in something that is impossible for you to do in your own strength. And that is the very role that Jesus enacted on earth. Oh, you think how wonderful it would have been to walk with Jesus. You read in the Gospels that as Jesus walks up and he heals the sick and he raises the dead and he preaches on the Sermon, uh, the sermon on the Mount and he, and he does all these wonderful things. How much would you love to have sat under the ministry of Jesus Christ? He had been their helper for years. But as Jesus goes back to heaven to sit at the right hand of his Father in glory, he says to his disciples, I will send you another helper and he'll be just like me. You know, there's a phrase, out of sight, out of mind. Uh, I want to assure you that when we were out of sight in the UK for four weeks, you were not out of our mind. But we were daily praying for you asking that God would bless the work. And we come back, and He's multiplied the ministry. And so we said to each other, maybe we should go, maybe every two months, to give you the opportunity to grow, and we can come and reap the benefits. 
But the reality is this, with God it is never out of sight, out of mind. You are constantly on the heart of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit constantly comforts his people in difficulty. And so Jesus is saying this, though I have the right words to say, the solution for every problem, though I have been your helper for years, comforting you, I will send to you another helper. Abang si Jesus ay malapit ng lisanin sila, magpapadalas siya ng isa pang helper, siya na may katulad na malasakit, katangian at pag-ibig. Hindi na iiwanan na magisa ang kanyang mga tupa sa ilang. Hindi niya papabayaan ang kanyang mga anak na maging mga ampon. But this new comforter would not only be with his people, but he would be in his people. In other words, Christ's followers today have an advantage even over the Christ's disciples in the New Testament. That is an incredible thing to contemplate. That you and I, as believers in Jesus Christ in the 21st century, have something even greater than the physical presence of Jesus Christ. We have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says that is even greater. And I want to say to you today, mga kaibigan, kung hindi mo pinaniniwalaan yan, Siguro ay hindi mo lubos na nauunawaan, kagaya ng iglesia sa Acts 9.31, kung sino talaga ang banal na espiritu. If you do not believe that to have the Holy Spirit inside of you is greater than to have Jesus beside you, then you have not understood what a glorious person He is and what a great function He will, he will play in your life. You think back to Pentecost. Fifty days after the resurrection, tongues of fire came to rest upon the church. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other languages. And they were given a great task, weren't they? To go and spread the gospel across the known world. Could they do that job in their own strength? No, not at all. They needed this work to be done. By the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Only could they disciple and teach and baptize and plant churches if the Holy Spirit came to dwell within them. Because all the energy, all the empowerment to discharge our duties of changing the world, of fulfilling the great commission of telling people about Jesus is supplied by the closeness of the Holy Spirit. Many hundreds of years before this event in Acts 9.31, Ezekiel the prophet says in chapter 36, verse 26, A new heart I will give to you, and a new spirit I will put within you. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And that's what we're seeing here, isn't it, friends? This is not a passive church, but this is an active church. They are walking in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. They are not content to just say, well, we've got the Spirit, so let's just go and live however we like. But they must walk. They must progress. They must go forwards in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And I want to ask you, ikaw naman, nauunawaan mo ba ang Na, na ang presensya ng kaaliwan ng banal na espiritu ay hindi isang future guarantee, isang pangako para mamaya or bukas. We don't have to send for the Holy Spirit. We don't need to make an appointment to meet with the Holy Spirit and be put on a long waiting list and then just sit down and, and, and just twiddle our thumbs and wait for Him to come down. No the Holy Spirit, if you have believed in Jesus Christ, is in you today. And He's comforting you in your moment of need. If you have repented of your sin, if you have believed in the Savior, this is an available, close comfort for you. Some, uh, some churches today, they speak of the second blessing. You need to have the, the baptism. 
in the water and then you need to have a second baptism of the Holy Spirit. And some people, they spend their lives in those churches praying, God, why have I not been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Well, I want to tell you that it actually it happens before your physical baptism. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is when you believe in Jesus Christ. The moment a sinner comes to the Savior, they receive the Holy Spirit. There's no time delay. There's no loading. There's no, there's no waiting. He comes to dwell with his people and he stays there. And so as we draw to a close, we need to look at our final points. The Holy Spirit provides his church with a comfort that is countercultural, a comfort that is close. But thirdly, do you see on your program? It is a comfort that is constant. A comfort that is constant. Or kaaliwang di nagbabago. Marami sa inyo, walang duda ay nakaranas na ng pagtataksil ng isang kaibigan. Isang tao na akala mo ay kasangga mo, ngunit naging taksil. They turned into somebody that you did not think they would be. And the world, unfortunately for us, is full of fair weather friends. This world is full of people who will stab you in your back. But take comfort today that the Holy Spirit is not like that. God, the Holy Spirit, is a friend for all seasons. Uh, the Holy Spirit is constant. And the way that you can know that to be true is as you study the Bible. As you study God's Word, you get that comfort. It's like going down to a well and you put your bucket in the well and you draw up the water. That's what we do when we go to the Bible. We put our bucket down and we say, Lord, teach me, fill me up, give me comfort from your word. And as we walk away from the Bible, we feel that, don't we? That thirst has been quenched, that, that, that starving feeling has been satisfied. The Bible is where you go to receive the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And so can I encourage you, as we did yesterday in our men's meeting and in our women's meeting, to be daily reading the Bible. That is what we need, isn't it? If we are to live in this world, we need to eat up the Bible. I don't mean physically, spiritually. Getting into that regular pattern. You know, it takes 12 minutes a day. And you do that for 365 days of the year. And you've read the whole Bible. 12 minutes a day. And you can read the whole of God's Word in one single year. How much more time do we give to meaningless, futile pursuits? How much time do we waste on our online gaming and our social media accounts and doing things which have no eternal value? Can I encourage you to draw from the water of the Word? To come to the Bible day by day and say, God, fill me up. Give me this comfort in your words. You know, this book, the Bible, is the means by which the Spirit comforts his people. And uh, that's what Spurgeon said. C.H. Spurgeon, he said, the Holy Spirit, he takes your soul. to me the wisest consolation and comfort. Psalm 119, verse 50. This is my comfort in affliction. Your word has given me life. How many times have you, brothers and sisters in Christ, been withering and you come to the Bible and it's like water has been applied and you start to flourish? Have you experienced that? If you have not experienced, you're not reading your Bible enough because that is exactly the comfort that comes through His Word. Mga kaibigan, ang kaaliwan na umuuspong mula sa salita ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ng banal na Espiritu ay hindi nagbabagong kaaliwan. Hindi ka makakarating sa dulo ng Biblia. Hindi ko nais ipagpalagay na ako'y nagsasalita sa mga converted na ngayong hapon o ngayong gabi. There may be some of you dito sa Grace Plant Santa Maria and you know the gospel intellectually. You know Christianity observationally. You know about the Holy Spirit theologically. 
but you have not received the gift of grace experientially. You know all the facts and the figures. You've got a mind full of knowledge, but you've got a heart that does not love Jesus Christ. Oh, nais ko kayong imbitahan ngayon, matungo sa cross, lumapit kay Kristo, aminin ang inyong mga kasalanan, magtiwala kay Jesus, hilingin ninyong kayo'y punuin niya ng kaaliwan na nagmumula sa banal na Espiritu. If you want this countercultural comfort, this close and constant comfort, because the Bible says, Ngayon ang araw ng kaligtasan. Today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not sa susunod na linggo, not next year, not in 10 years, but right now, you need to put your trust in Jesus Christ. You've got to stop waiting. You've got to stop putting it on hold. You've got to stop wasting your life chasing after the bubbles of this world and when you get them they pop because they're nothing go to the bible go to jesus christ come to him and say jesus save me by your grace walang madaling paraan upang sabihin ito ngunit kung hindi mo kilala ang iyong kagalakan dito sa mundo haharap Haharapin mo siya bilang iyong kahatulan sa mundong paparating. Kaya't walang mas mabuting araw para maligtas kundi hindi, kung hindi ngayon. And so we've been reflecting, haven't we, on the Church of Christ. They are, they are walking in the fear of the Lord. They're walking in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. They're being edified. They're being multiplied. But before you can be part of a church like that, you need the grace of God in your hearts. You need to be converted before you can begin to walk in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And so we began the message with the missionary David Livingstone. And so from one missionary to another, I want to finish with a man called John Payton. John Payton. He was a missionary to the cannibals of the South Sea Islands of the New Hebrides in the 1800s. And his life was an endless cycle of dangers and snow, toils and snares. Every day, he witnessed horrible things happening to him. Fellow workers, his own wife being killed and eaten by cannibals. Now that would be enough to send you back to your home country, wouldn't it? But John Payton persevered. And on one occasion, he was being hunted by the cannibals. And so he quickly hid in the tree and he climbed the tree to escape from the danger. And while the attackers were raiding his house down there, he was up in the tree reciting this verse that was the key text of the life of Livingstone. You remember it? Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That was what he was saying to himself in that moment of trouble. And Peyton's life was providentially spared that night. He was saved. And so he wrote in his journal, I have never known such comfort as I did in that moment in the tree. And even 40 years later, though Peyton's memory was fading, somebody asked him, what's the highlight of your life? And he said to them, if I could go anywhere back in time, I would go back to that tree. And I would enjoy the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the comfort that came from his words. Oh, friends, that is a sign of a true believer. That is a sign of a real Christian. That even in the midst of hardships, even in the face of danger, they can cling to the comfort and they can walk forward because they know that he is with them. Friends, I want to finish with this. There is no comfort like the countercultural, close, and constant comfort of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing like that in all the world. There's no greater consolation for your souls as we walk through a world that is filled with danger and death and destruction and darkness than when a church of Christ walks in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Well, may God help us. Here in this plant, Santa Maria, for many, many years to come, to never forget our duty.
to be like the church in Judea, Galilee and Samaria, walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. That is how a church is edified and multiplied. Amen.